What a person hates tells you a lot about what they fear. Just a thought that may or may not help you as you try to recover from your Thanksgiving dinner. See, the last time I had a big religious argument was at Thanksgiving, and it's the reason I don't do that shit anymore. Yeah, big religious arguments. I still do Thanksgiving. but So I got baited into it by an in-law that coaxed me in with the promise of a rational discussion. He was just curious what I believed and had some questions about it. He didn't want to fight about anything. He just wanted to understand what the atheist position was. Or at least that was his cover story. And I was too new to vocal atheism to know any better. So I, I took his sucker's bet and I started answering his questions. Of course, th they weren't really questions so much as argument prompts. He had some little gotcha flow chart in his head that was supposed to lead me to Jesus, but he knew that if he said, I want to convince you to join my religion, I wouldn't have played along. But this was about 12 years ago, so it's kind of the height of the four horsemen counter apologetics. I was way more prepared for the conversation than he was expecting. So not only did I have answers to all his silly ass questions, but I knew where he was trying to go with them. And I was able to deflate a lot of his follow ups before he even got around to following up. Now, keep in mind, of course, this is all playing out in a house full of people. It starts off as a one on one conversation, but it's not just me and my brother in law in isolation. So pretty soon other people start insinuating themselves into the conversation. And instead of answering a few questions about the atheist position, I'm in a six against one argument about whether Grandma Lawrence is in heaven. What's more, I I'm kind of new to this shit, so I don't know any better than to keep winning. So like a 45-year-old Noah would have at a certain point in the discussion, in the unlikely event he bothered to participate in that kind of discussion at all, pretend to be stumped, right? Like he'd throw him a bone, he'd shrug his shoulders, and he'd offer some disingenuous olive branch along the lines of, well, I guess none of us can know for sure. But early 30s Noah didn't know any better, so he just kept dunking on Jesus over and over and over again. And at a certain point, of course, shit gets emotional. Women are sad. Men are also sad, but they're too toxically masculine to admit that that's what's going on, so they pretend that they're just mad at me for making the women sad. One of my wife's aunts literally cries, and I experienced probably for the first time that feeling you get when your very existence makes people sad. Really, I, I get she was crying because of some combination of hating conflict and having to contemplate her own mortality, but the reason she had to do that is because I existed and admitted it in public. Now, since then, I've, I've gone out of my way to avoid religious debates. I, I know that seems like an odd statement given that after that I started an atheist podcast, but it's not like we've ever used the podcast for debate. Yes, we present arguments in favor of atheism and we pick apart arguments in favor of theism, but mostly we just turn to other atheists and say, hey, sorry people are sad about your existence. Of course, just because I learned my lesson doesn't mean y'all did. And, and given when this episode is coming out and when most of you get around to downloading the Thanksgiving episodes, it stands to reason that at least a few of you are listening to this in the aftermath of some angry brother-in-law and some crying auntie. Many of you are listening to this after being asked by well-meaning peacemakers if you could just pretend not to exist for Aunt Kathy's sake for a little bit. And the message I want to send you away with is the reminder that what people hate tells you a lot about what they fear. Now, I, I get that a lot of you are, come from like these religiously homogenous families. Everybody's a Mormon in your family. Everybody's like this one particular slice of Baptist. Everybody goes to this one particular church and always has. But for most of you, there's some variety in your family's religion, right? Like, you know, maybe they're all Christian, but some of them are Episcopalians. A few of them are Catholic. Some of them are Southern Baptist. Maybe there's even like a neo-pagan hippie with some weird bullshit nature Jesus thing going on. That's how my family is. And somehow all of them can peacefully coexist without anybody getting pissed off and crying. Nobody even bothers to broach the subject of which of their mutually exclusive takes on religion are correct. But you toss one atheist into the mix and that changes everything. People want to argue. People want to disprove. And when they can't succeed in that, they get angry and sad and emotional. And why is that? Right? I mean, Catholic theology and Protestant theology are irreconcilable. There are plenty of wars out there to back me up on that. According to Catholics, Protestants are going to hell. According to Protestants, Catholics are going to hell. Well, that's way worse than the just dying that atheism condemns them to. And yet they can have Thanksgiving together with no issues, even when it comes time to say grace and invoke God. 
Now, now, I understand that's not true in all places at all times, but in like modern American culture and that of pretty much the entire rest of the English speaking world, that's the case. The subject almost certainly won't come up. And if it did, it's way less likely to ruin everybody's meal than atheism is. And that's because Catholics in modern day America don't spend any time considering how likely it is that Baptists are right. Baptists don't look at themselves in the mirror, realize that Catholicism makes way more sense, and then push that thought out of their head. Nobody at your Thanksgiving dinner really fears that some other type of religion is the right one, but they all fear atheism. And they all know on some level that their religion is bullshit and anything that threatens that carefully cultivated illusion needs to be banished or at the very least apologized for. Now, I'm not saying this is universally true. There are plenty of Christians that are married enough to their sect to hate all other forms of Christianity. There are plenty of religious fundamentalists that would greet atheism and, you know, ever so slightly different Christianity with the same vitriol. And of course, xenophobia will fuck this metric right up if the religion is mostly reserved for some other ethnic group. But on the whole, it's a pretty good heuristic for what they actually believe. You know, much in the same way that the most vocal homophobes always turn out to be gay, the people most furious about your atheism are, generally speaking, the ones closest to being convinced by it. 